The options for home entertainment are growing, and more Americans are getting that entertainment without a cable or satellite hookup. The companies are fighting back with deals and more choices. Local 12's Paula Toti shows us how some are living off the cable grid. Tanley Breen catches up with her favorite TV shows on her tablet. All I really want is a chance. Bye. Bye. The 25-year-old is one of a growing number of consumers who get their entertainment from streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon, not from cable or satellite. He's my favorite character. Breen and her roommate, Ellen Kwan, don't even own a TV. No point, really. No. A new report from media analyst Maggot and Associates finds the number of people who plan to cut the cable connection is growing from 2.2% in 2012 to 2.9% in 2014. When you're talking about mass media, small numbers add up to mass numbers of people and mass dollars. Bring and Quan say they can't afford cable or a TV, but they also say that doesn't matter. It's not like there's anything on TV that I can't find on the internet anyway. One big exception is live sports programming. The least likely group to cord cut are active viewers of ESPN. Cable and satellite companies are trying to hold on to customers with cheaper prices, original programming, extra premium channels, and services that allow customers to get their shows on phones, computers, and tablets. But analysts say that might not be enough to stop a steady stream of viewers from cutting the cord in the future. Paula Toti, Local 12 News.